Hi, Combat Wombat here, and today is a very special day. If y'all didn't know, last month an absolute masterpiece of a film was released. I knew this film would be a masterpiece before I even watched it. It's just look. Yeah, they made a Combat Wombat movie. A Wombat superhero. You didn't think it would happen, but I knew that one day they'd make a movie about my origin story. Take that, Dad! That's right, this movie is all about my exploits before I became a YouTuber. I kinda wish they would've had me voice act in it, as I am an aspiring voice actor. You guys really think it's me? What about Taylor? She hasn't done a single task this whole time! This is an Among Us Minecraft machinima. End me. I'm going to be reviewing this Shakespearean movie film, but before we get into the review, you know what time it is. Christmas is coming up, gamers. Treat yourself or someone you love to an epic gift, like a Ridge Wallet. They're stylish wallets that can fit up to 12 cards and cash for convenient and quick access. And in case you're worried about durability, my clumsy self dropped mine in the garage, on the concrete. No scratches, no damage, and I didn't have to play 52 card pickup. It kept everything secure. Ridge wallets come in a variety of different colors and styles. You like Hawaiian themes? <laughs> yeah, you do. If you're interested in a Ridge wallet yourself, why not use my code WOMBAT for 10% off your order? A huge thank you to Ridge Wallet for supporting the channel. So the movie starts with stupid animal children playing hide and seek. This raccoon thing decides to dig a hole and runs into our main character, Maggie the Wombat. Yeah, I used to be a female. Long story. Anyways, the raccoon and Maggie the Wombat really hit it off and get married. Yeah, just like that. Who knew it was that easy? Now that the two are adults, we see these two lovebirds on a date. You know, at the local mine. Actually, they work there. Suddenly, the mine starts caving in. Raccoon bitch makes a hole and lets Wombat go first. Her thickness prevents her from fitting all the way through. Finally, she makes it but Raccoon Man is stuck behind and dies. Maybe if Maggie here would have lost some weight, her husbando would still be alive. Sometimes, being thick comes at a cost. This blue bird comes and saves the day like a chad, but doesn't listen to Maggie as she tries to tell him to save her raccoon husband. Which angers her and makes her hate this superhero douche. Now six months have passed, Maggie is still searching for her dead husband's corpse. It's pretty dark, but she can't find him. She goes to the police asking for their case file, but they won't let her see it. Oh, but they let this blue chicken look at case files because he's a hero. Maybe we should defund the police. Next, we see her depressed at her house, looking at pictures of her husband. So right off the bat, this movie hits you right in the heartstrings with an emotional sucker punch straight to your dick. We barely knew these two. I mean, really. They were together for like five minutes. But damn if I didn't cry for 20 minutes after his death. I really feel for Maggie here. Every good superhero needs a dramatic origin story. Maggie checks her food pantry and decides that an entire pantry full of food isn't enough for her fat ass. So she goes to get more food. Yeah, that's what you need. Eat more! That isn't why you're husbandless or anything. She goes to this store, basically the animal version of 7-Eleven. And while this movie was basically the Mona Lisa of movies, there is one fatal flaw. This little bitch! Honestly, I wish Maggie the Wombat never came to this store. Seriously, this character, Sweetie, yeah, that's his name. He works at the store, and it gets robbed by these little furry bastards. Wombat, of course, being the chad she is, stops them. She ass-blasts the evildoers. And this little fanboy starts following her around and calling her a superhero. Now, I'll give him credit. He does come up with a pretty cool superhero name. Wombat! Wombat! Yeah. But apart from that, this little winged skunk is easily the most annoying bag of fart fumes to ever exist. He is in almost every scene in this movie, and he never shuts up. He's constantly fanboying over Maggie the Wombat, making noise, and overall, just being completely worthless. 
He's supposed to be the comedy element of this movie. I forgot to mention that. This is a comedy. It's really funny. You're too young for that. Too young? I guess you haven't noticed I have a mustache. Had me rolling on the floor the entire time. So after Sweetie tries to convince Wombat to be a superhero, she tries to get away from his annoying ass and goes to her house. I don't blame her. But no. This dumb chinchilla had to chase some animal around and get himself stuck hanging off of this rail. So Maggie goes and saves him. Because she is a great character who is very caring and would never let a creature die. Even one as despicable and pathetic as this one. But oh boy. She's made the biggest mistake of her wombat life, because now he's an even bigger fanboy. He sneaks into her house the next day, and he insists that she becomes a superhero. After contemplating committing seppuku, she decides that she can become a superhero in order to get the files she needs to find her husband and why the mine collapsed. We then have a very cool, epic hero montage of her doing all of these steps to become a hero, like making a costume and doing an epic hero pose. You really see the transformation from her being a fatty to being a fatty superhero, Combat Wombat. I was cheering the entire time this montage was happening. But next, we discover something even more disturbing about Sweetie. This inside-out whale anus is obsessed with Combat Wombat's ass. How about Butt Woman? Super incredibly strong Butt Wombat! Awesome butt moves. The entire movie, he keeps bringing up how big her gluteus maximi is. I'm not even joking. As if I didn't hate this character enough. Not only is he annoying, with a voice that resembles a dying, shrieking kangaroo, ah! he's also a pervert! So next, Wombat and this thing go and save an animal in need. While this movie is the greatest thing since Jesus Christ himself, I have to make one nitpick. For a superhero movie, you don't really see Wombat doing much superhero stuff. Overall, the pacing of the movie seems rather rushed in general. You don't really get to see much superheroing. Instead, you just see a montage showing that Wombat has saved a bunch of animals. It's more about Wombat and <laughs> learning to be superheroes and having a great emotional journey. Which is fine, because that's the story they wanted to tell. And it's amazing, by the way, better than The Last of Us. Next, Combat Wombat turns down this wrinkly bag of sand that wants to do sponsorship deals with her, replacing the blue feathered hero bird thing. Because Combat Wombat doesn't care about the money, she cares about justice and finding her dead husband. Wombat and Sweetie then get a message telling them that the wrinkly creature's office is being robbed. They go there, but it isn't being robbed. It was a setup. They're being framed for robbing the place. And now Combat Wombat is seen as a criminal. Yeah, that kind of came out of nowhere, just right after they became superheroes. Again, the pacing. Wombat decides to go and just steal the files she wants, now that she's branded a criminal and the cops won't just give them to her now. Of course, the movie has this extremely cliche- I mean, impactful and profound scene, where this pile of horse manure sees that Wombat stole the files and is all like, YOU ACTUALLY ARE A THIEF! YOU WERE SUPPOSED TO BE A SUPERHERO! And Wombat's like, shut up, bitch. I never cared to be a hero. I just wanted these files. See? Should have had me voice act Wombat in this movie. Maybe in the sequel. Wink? So Sweetie mopes and leaves after guilt-tripping Wombat about how his dad never loved him or something. Do they really expect the audience to feel pity for this pathetic organism? No, I don't. Frick him. All my homies hate Sweetie. But literally, two seconds later, Wombat looks at the stupid hero book and feels sorry for being mean to Sweetie. She has a schizophrenic episode and sees her husband's picture speaking to her about family and friendship or whatever. And she sees in the files that this random animal who was at the mine is also involved in a ton of other crimes. And she goes to Sweetie's store and apologizes to him. And he pretty much immediately forgives her once she gives him a sidekick costume. What was the point of having this emotional scene where they split up and get mad if 30 seconds later it's resolved? Again, love this movie, it's better than Titanic. 
but the pacing is really, really quick. In fact, the movie's almost over. They go and interrogate the animal she saw in the case files. He's an actor or some shit. They find out that him and a bunch of other animals have been faking crimes so that the blue feathered bird hero can pretend to stop them. So he's not even a real hero like Combat Wombat is. He's a fake. A bank robbery happens, so they go and confront Bluebird Man about faking the crimes that he stops. But wow, plot twist. He didn't know they were faked. He thought he was a real hero this entire time. It turns out the obviously evil old lady was evil the whole time. Holy cow! She faked all the crimes so that Bluebird would get sponsorships and she could make money. That's a really stupid plan. Seriously, that's dumb. Then she turns into a giant monster. What? And a chase scene ensues. Bluebird, Wombat, and this thing all work together to take down the evil monster. Sweetie finally flies because we totally care about his character development. And the day is saved. At the end, Wombat has a big monologue about what being a hero is really about. And how anybody can be a hero. How moving. In conclusion, this movie beats the absolute ass cheeks out of any superhero movie you've ever seen. Batman? Lame. Spider-Man? Ew! Combat Wombat is the quintessential superhero movie. It's funny, it's emotional, it tugs at your heartstrings. The animation is a thing. The movie has the exaggerated moisture of a wombat. I like it. I should have just made this review two seconds long. It's called Combat Wombat. Boom! Masterpiece. Watch it. The only way this movie could have been improved would have been to purge this toilet stain out of the movie completely. Just get rid of him. Every scene with him in it is torture, which is pretty much every scene in the movie. 10 out of 10. Hey, thanks to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon and as a channel member. You guys keep this wombat going. Thanks. Also, you should watch some of my other videos. They're not as bad as this one, I swear. Please.